how a Spark manages these memories for driver and executor. Let's go. So this you already are aware that when you submit an application, it goes to master node uh, that is Yarn, and then um, Yarn uh, you know execute the driver container and executor container. So I just taken an example of two CPUs uh, for each uh, container and uh, 8 GB and 4 GB respectively. Okay. Only for explanation purpose, I took this uh, sample figures. What happens when we assign this 4 GB to driver, right? Uh, now I am just going little deeper. Deeper means this is very important. JVM process, JVM heap memory, then non-JVM process, overhead memory. There are two concepts, right? You have to understand. Heap memory, you are already aware. That is handled by JVM, but non-JVM processed overhead memory. So this overhead memory, who will use this? That non-JVM process will use this. Now, as per the documentation, it is saying non-JVM. Overhead memory is a 10% of a, uh, actual uh, container memory. Okay. Here container memory is 4GB, 10% or 384, whichever is higher. Guys, let, let us assume if you given a 2GB. 10% of 2GB is how much? 200 MB which is very less, right? It won't take 200 MB. It will take 384 minimum. So minimum is 384. Let us say if you assign 4 GB, then 10% of 4 GB is 400 MB. So in this case, it will take 400 MB. Okay. Overhead memory will be consumed by container process, shuffle exchange and other its internal usage. So this memory is typically used for uh, these places. This is a configuration that we generally pass when we submitting our Spark application, right? Spark drive driver dot memory. See here, Spark drive driver dot memory overhead, 400 MB. If you are able to understand this, and then uh, you can also able to understand executor memory allocation. Okay. Same diagram. Okay. There's no change. Now this time I'm going with a executor container. So same diagram, there's no change, okay? Same points, it, it also uses the 10% of overhead memory, okay? But small setting is, you are writing spark.executor.memory. Earlier you used spark.driver.memory. Here you are using spark.executor.memory, all right? And um, obviously if you, executor is having as 8 GB, then 10% of 8 GB goes to overhead. That means 800 MB. Okay. Guys. We'll go uh, executor memory deep dive. Let's go a deeper into executor memory. How further it divides? JVM processed on heap memory will divide further and how it will be uh, utilized. Now, Guys, this is very important. And JVM processed on heap memory further divide into three types of memories. One is reserved memory, that is Spark reserved memory, Spark memory, and then user memory. There is a clear cut definitions or a meaning in these three words. Reserved. I will take 300 MB. That is reserved for me. Then do whatever you want for leftover memory. I don't care. Spark memory. What is Spark memory? Spark memory, it uses for uh, all this competition, caching, everything. What is user memory? There is a meaning, right? User. User will utilize this memory. Let us say you created some UDFs. Where this UDFs, user defined function will uh, store? This user memory, not in Spark memory. So whatever users introduces, those come into User memory, JVM processed and heap memory further divided into three parts. One is reserved memory, spark memory, and user memory. Now there is a question. Then what is the ratio among this? Now the ratio is this. Reserved memory, 300 MB, and rest all, spark memory and user memory. If you try to understand this diagram, this portion is little higher than the user memory, right? It divides into... 60 is to 40 ratio by default. Okay. By default, you no need to explicitly say by default. However, if you want to do this, uh, you want user memory more, you can set it. 
you want to spark memory more you can set it that by using a spark commands i am not much talking about the 300 mb memory because that is reserved leave it for some time this is how internally spark allocates a memory to spark memory to user memory this we can decide this ratio i told you right spark dot memory dot fraction is a setting equal to 0.6 by default spark will give this number if you don't mention anything in a program it automatically give you like this and there automatically user memory will get adjusted that to 40 percent what if you mention this 0.7 fraction that means 70 is to 30 automatically it divides so it is configurable i'm stopping here are you able to understand till here or not because i want to explain one more topic in the same slide Yes, it's it's clear for me. Very good. So now moving to stage three. Guys, I'm not disturbing reserved memory that is on top, user memory on the bottom. Again, I'm just going a little deeper on the spark memory. Spark memory further divides into two parts. What is that? Storage memory pool, executor memory pool. Storage memory pool executor memory pool. If you see the size, indirectly you can say 50-50. 50-50. So storage memory pool. For what purpose we will use? When you do a caching, actual data frame caching, I mean to say persist or cache you will use, right? In memory, your data frames or RDDs will be stored in storage memory pool. Then all competitions, let us say all transformations or filters, like you will do all data processing activities, right? Or comments, uh, like let us say reduce by key or uh, select, filter, group by, all these things, like you will perform some uh, operations, right? All those will be executed by using executor memory pool. Okay. I no need to talk much on the user memory as of now, uh, but I'm just focusing on stage three is storage memory pool, executor memory pool. 300 MB are reserved memory basically used for Spark internal operations. Spark internal operations. And next, storage memory pool used for caching and persisting data. The storage memory can store RDDs, data frames, and data sets. Right? It is also dynamically shared the execution memory, allowing for a flexible allocation based on the workload demands. Let us say you haven't used persist or, or caching. Okay. Uh, then obviously the storage memory is uh, empty, right? So if Spark requires for execution purpose, it will use the storage memory also. What happens? It exceeds. Will it take a already persisted memory also? No, it won't take because first of reference, storage memory, first of reference always gives only for storage. If there is no storage, then only it will it will give to executor memory. I'm going for a real time example, guys. Let us say I have a thousand dollars. My friend asked me, please give me five hundred dollars. I will give you after one month. Okay. You feel that okay? I'm not using much, so I have a thousand dollars. Let me give five hundred dollars. You given five hundred dollars to your friend. Now what happens after one month? Somehow you need that money because. You need that money for some of your personal purpose. What you do? You will ask, hey friend, I want that 500 MB or give me at least uh, $250. I need that money urgently. Uh, your friend is supposed to give your money back. Now, you will use that 250 MB uh, to purchase another data. What happens to your friend? He may face a lot of challenges, right? What is friend here is executor memory. But executor requires that $250 also. But executor requires that 250 MB memory also. But unexpectedly, you have taken that back. What happens? In this case, that friend goes to shortage of money. Now the same in Spark also. Spark goes to executor out of memory exception. Are you able to understand, guys? Yes, Narish. Okay. Let me just complete this executor memory pool also. Yeah, used for data frame compute operations like joints, aggregations, shuffles, transformations. It's dynamically shared between execution and storage, meaning 
if execution memory is not being used it can be allocated to storage and vice versa guys again same example if you are two friends you can share money be between you correct so same case let us say executor your friend is having money now you need some money then you can ask your friend nah? hey friend i need some money because i am doing some function so i need some extra money can you please give me you will take that money from your friend if the money is available with your friend you will borrow money right so the storage memory pool and executor memory pool can share their memory based on the requirements if both are in a critical situation it leads to a executor out of memory exception any questions so far so naresh you are saying that okay they dynamically can exchange their memories whenever it requires right yes that example is there you can just correlate yes. are you able to understand agar yes naresh yes naresh yes great good user memory as i told you utilized for udf that is user defined functions broadcast variables objects that are not managed by spark internal operations that is rdd conversion operations user memory utilized for udfs and broadcast variables okay that's it and executor memory pool used for or in i am i'm not saying that you should not go into the, this much deeper if interview ask only you can explain if not no need to explain but you how to understand what happens internally okay so you how to understand why i am getting this spark out of memory exception these things that you have to answer in interviews or you have to understand in your day day to day life if you are job going executor out of memory exception there are several reasons it could be shortage of overhead memory it could be shortage of uh, we can say storage uh, pool it could be shortage of executor pool it could be shortage of user memory as well okay there are lot of you know reasons right so hope it is very clear for you uh, now you can able to answer if you see spark dot memory dot storage fraction storage there is a small difference here is just a fraction but here is storage fraction 0.5 by default however you can set this also one thing i want to highlight here is if the executor memory is less than 1.5 times of reserved memory spark will fail with a please use large heap size error message this is a note guys this is important try to note so when you are allocating some executor memory right it should be minimum of 1.5 times of this reserved memory what is the reserved memory here is 300 mb what is the 1.5 of 300 mb is 450 mb this operations i can say somewhere here should be this memory let us execute a memory i can say minimum 450 mb you have to give just try to understand this point if the executor memory is less than 1.5 times of reserved memory then it will throw an exception so don't ever put a less than 1.5 times of a reserved memory that is 450 mb of a memory you don't allocate less than that okay